All right, welcome back to the channel. So Javante Davis gets sharply criticized by uh, Regis Prograde over his move to 140 and says, look, man, I will beat that dude. And the only reason I'm not is because Floyd Mayweather Jr. won't let him anywhere near me. Let's talk about Javante Davis's move up to 140 uh, and Regis Prograde's response to that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about Gervonta Tank Davis and the next fight that he is rumored to have, which would be at 140 pounds against a man uh, um, named Mario Barrios. Barrios, Mario Barrios. Very, he's a good fighter, man. He's a good fighter. Mario Barrios uh, is trained by Virgil Ortiz, uh, Virgil, excuse me, Virgil Hunter. Saw him fight on the undercard of Errol Spence Jr. and Danny Garcia. And I think the dude is a very, very solid fighter, right? I and it does, and it's not illogical to me that Gervonta Davis would move to 140, uh, that 140 move to 140 to fight him, um, and that's for several reasons. Primarily because Gervonta Davis is a big guy, you know, he's a big guy, and he's a short guy, but he's a big guy, and he has to drain himself down to 130 pounds, and he can manage it, right? Because his frame isn't tall and long, but you know, I think it's difficult on him doing that. Same thing for it at 135 pounds. I mean, he's just a little, he's a battery pack, you know? So he's, uh, even at 135, I, he may feel like, man, I really got to keep squeezing myself down to these weight classes. We're still in the middle of COVID. So maybe I'll take a non-title fight at 140 and, you know, get a fight in. However, in this particular instance, I won't have to drop down and lose a lot of weight, right? So that could be the the logic for his next fight being Mario Barrios. He had a good fight with um with um Leo Santa Cruz at 130 slash 135. There's really not the fights available for him at 135 right now, even if he was really trying to get him. And I'm definitely gonna address that in a minute, whether or not Gervonta Davis is really trying to get those fights at 135. I'm just saying that he's a champion at 130, he's a champion at 135, he's had weight problems the whole time. And maybe he's saying this time, I'm just going to give myself enough room at 140 where I don't have any problem making weights. I don't have to have that headline, you know, and then boom. I'll be interested to know what he's going to do after that. If he stays at 140, right, then I think that is when there can be an issue. If he is going to 140 for a one-off fight, keep holding on to his 130 belt, he could just say, yeah, I just don't feel like you know, in this pandemic with all this quarantine that I want to run myself through another one of those bubble camps. No, you know what I mean? I'm going to fight at 140 and I'm going to make sure that my weight is more manageable because of that. And then he goes back down. I would understand that. But if what he's saying is I've won belts at 130, I've bet one belts at 135 and now I'm fighting for a belt at 140 and it's a secondary belt or something like that. Then I'll be like, nah, dude, come on, man. You, you got to fight the best guys in the division, you know? And Regis Progre is one of the best guys in the division at 140. If you're not familiar with Regis Progre, you really should be. He's an excellent, excellent fighter. He used to be the WBA 140-pound champion until he lost his belt against Josh Taylor in a very, very good fight, a very competitive fight that was in the hometown of Josh Taylor. I, judging by the scorecards, if, if, on one card, Regis Progre would have won well, would have won round 12, then that fight would have been a draw. And in boxing, they don't like draws. That's the unspoken rule. So, you know, no draw. And since when you have no draw and they're going to fix the draw and give a decision, who do you think is most likely to get it? It's going to be the guy with the home crowd. So the home crowd doesn't get mad and the home crowd has something to be happy about. That's why they're like, you really got, you have to, have to beat the champion, really beat him, right? Because people may be looking at it and say, oh, I'm going to give you the decision. That is what I thought happened with Regis Progre and Josh Taylor. But still, Regis Progre is one heck of a fighter. He got ducked by Jose Ramirez, and he made a well beat Jose Ramirez. Unfortunately, Jose Ramirez ducked him. So when Regis Progre is saying what he said, which is, come on, man, that dude coming up to 140, ain't no way he's going to fight me. Floyd Mayweather Jr., uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. will never let this guy fight me. And I think that that is probably true, right? 
he wouldn't let Regis Progray fight uh, uh, Gervonta Davis. And it's and not just for the reason that Regis Progray is saying. Regis Progray is saying Floyd Mayweather Jr. is not going to let me fight him. That's yeah, because Regis Progray is the type of fight fighter that Floyd Mayweather Jr. is not setting up with Gervonta Davis. Right? If you look at who Gervonta Davis is fighting, Gervonta Davis is following that Floyd Mayweather blueprint where he's going to fight a Spanish-speaking fighter, Spanish-named fighter, so that he can draw in that crowd along with his own, similar to the way that Floyd Mayweather Jr. did that. I just don't believe, I believe that that is what Gervonta Davis is on, not Gervonta Davis himself, but the, promote, the, the actual promoter, right? Which will bring up the question, what would happen, though, if Regis Progre and Gervonta Davis got in a ring together? And I think that Gervonta Davis would probably lose to Regis Progre. Because Regis Progre is an excellent counterpuncher. He is a big guy. He's got very, very heavy hands. And he is going to be in there fighting with Gervonta Davis. Now, there's a chance that Gervonta Davis might beat him because I think that skill-wise, you know, Gervonta Davis is probably the more well-rounded fighter. And there are some things that Gervonta Davis might do against Regis Progre that he wouldn't do against another fighter that was a big hitter. In one of the recent one an interview that that Regis Progre that that Gervonta Davis gave in the lead into the Santa Cruz fight, he said that exact same, that exact same thing. He's like, look, if I move up to beat these bigger guys, I'm not going to fight the same way that I'm fighting against uh, Leo Santa Cruz. When I go in there with Leo Santa Cruz and I feel that Leo Santa Cruz can't touch me or really can't hurt me, then okay, I'll take a couple of those shots so I can get in there and I know when I hit him, my shots are going to take you out. So that's the way that he fought. He would fight somebody like, uh, Leo Santa Cruz or somebody like uh, the other guys that he fought, right? Um, I don't feel your power, so I'm going to come in here and give you mine and you're going to get out of there. However, that may not be the case with a guy like Regis Progre because Regis Progre pro is bigger than Gervonta Davis. I do believe he's bigger in height. I do believe he's longer in reach. And also he's somebody that hits very heavily with both hands. So that is the type of guy that Gervonta Davis would have to box and not somebody that he's necessarily just going to go through a high guard on and try to get to him and knock him out with an uppercut. Because even if he got to um, Regis Progray like that, I don't think Regis Progray is going to go goodbye like that. Because like I said, he's a solid 140 pounder who really could compete at 147. But the problem is that he's, is, his, is his height and his, and his length. He's not going to want to get in there with a guy against somebody like a Jerron Ennis or Errol Spence Jr. or somebody like that that just has, you know, has a three-inch height advantage on him, multiple-inch reach advantage on him, like, like Josh Taylor did, who could win rounds because whenever he wanted to, he would go back out, jab from the outside, try to score some points. But then whenever, but he couldn't keep um, Regis Progray off him, and that's why his eye was this big at the end of the fight. So, you know, I like what Regis Progray is saying, and, you know, I don't necessarily think that Gervonta Davis wouldn't fight him because he doesn't think he could win. But I do I do believe that, that Floyd Mayweather would be the guy that would prevent that fight from happening from a stylistic match, from a stylistic standpoint, and also from a, like the demographics of the fight. Leonard LB has said it many times, dude, we're, we're trying to put on big shows. And in order to make if big shows are what you're trying to do, then you're trying to mix different communities to come in so you can have a big show. That's not fortunate for the guys that are in your same community that deserves the fights, that deserve those fights. And as a result, you know, it's going to be, it may be wind up a situation where Gervonta Davis winds up making a lot of money. Um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. makes a lot of money. But when Gervonta Davis is done, he's not going to have the reputation that Floyd did because he doesn't have the fights against the guys that he should be fighting. At 135, there's Tiafimo Lopez, there's Devin Haney, there's Ryan Garcia. At 130, there's Shakur Stevenson, there's Oscar Valdez, there's a bunch of guys he could fight, right? So anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.